In this lesson, we're going to learn the Hapkido self-defense techniques one to seven for green belt. So with these techniques here, your attacker is going to start again in a walking stance, low block position. They're going to step forward and they're going to throw a right middle punch every time. So your attacker is facing you again. So picture the attacker here. They're going to step forward. They're going to throw a right punch every time. So for these techniques, we call this the Hapkido punching technique. So this one, they're not already grabbing you, they're attacking. And we're going to use some Hapkido uh, arm locks and throws to be able to defend against that. So a little bit higher level, more difficult here because previously they already had a hold of us and we were either just trying to escape or we were looking for an immediate arm lock. This time we're going to take their attack and we're going to use their momentum and we're going to use their momentum against them and use some traps, blocks, and arm locks to get them into submissions and throws. So that's why I say a little bit higher level technique. So the first technique, defender starts in ready stance here, chumbi stance. So when they attack with the punch, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come forward, form inward strike block, so their arm is going to be right here. I block it, I trap it with this hand right here, then I'm going to pivot around, circle, and throw. So for safety in class, we bring the arm a little bit lower down just to spin the opponent around, we don't actually do the throw. But if you're really doing it, this technique, again, I just want to make sure I'm on video here. You block, okay? So you step forward, you block. You trap the arm right here. So the opponent's arm is going to be here. You trap it. You spin, rotate around into a sitting stance. And as you bring that arm up over top of your head, if you're really doing it, you would bring it down on top of the shoulder and throw this way. And they're going up and over your shoulder. For safety, we take it around to the side right here. This is where their arm would be. And then we pull and twist. What ends up happening is your, they will feel it, your opponent will feel if they either, if, if they don't go with it, there's a chance they're going to have a broken arm with this technique. So whenever you're practicing the Hapkido self-defense techniques, especially with a partner, you have to be very, very careful because there's very little margin for error as we get up into some of the higher level techniques. So you really have to be careful. If I'm showing this from the side, again, imagine the attacker is punching. If you want to see the actual videos where I'm doing them with a partner, I have a playlist where I do them with my dad. So I urge you to check out those videos. I don't explain anything in those videos. I'm just doing it. So it's just me with my dad as my partner doing it. So here I have an opportunity to teach what is actually going on. So here's the punch. It gets blocked. I trap it right here, so they can't pull away. I turn, rotate, bring the arm up over top of my head, bring it down like this, and then twist. So I'm pulling their arm this way, I'm sticking my shoulder out, and I'm bending as I do it. And when I do this motion here, they're gonna come around and they're gonna ultimately fall down onto the ground here, doing it the gentle way. If you're doing it for real, you're gonna bring it up over top of the shoulder and do this, and they're gonna go over the top, it'll be a throw. If they don't go with it, they'll have a broken arm. And in some cases, they'll have a broken arm and they'll be thrown at the same time. So, pretty nasty techniques. So, number two, left side. 
blocking. So again, form in, oh, actually, even before I get to number two, uh, I have an alternate version of number one for students that are interested. If you're concerned that the attacker, after throwing a punch, the attacker would come back with a left hand, in that space of time where you're in this position here and you've blocked their right arm, and you're thinking that in the time it takes you to come around and start the move, bang, you're gonna get hit with a left hand. A lot of schools don't consider the left hand. They assume that everybody is right-handed. They assume that nobody can punch with their left hand, which is a mistake. So most schools, when they teach this technique, they will teach it as a right punch and nothing coming after. So I'm thinking, if the right punch doesn't work, there's probably a pretty good chance that the left hand is coming soon after. So if you want what I consider to be a safer version of number one, I also show this one in my videos, but here, block and punch. So outward form, side block, high punch simultaneously. What this does is you're throwing something back. So you're stopping the attacker's punch, deflecting it off to the side, and you're throwing something back, hitting them in the face, then you trap the arm, and you do the technique exactly the same way that you did before. So from here, block punch, trap that arm, come around, and then <clears throat> bring them around in front, or throw over top of the shoulder. So it's the same finish to the technique, the only difference is you're blocking and immediately counterattacking at the same time so that your opponent doesn't have an opportunity to add to the initial technique. If their right hand is blocked, they're probably gonna to wanna to come back and throw a left. But if they're throwing a right punch and you immediately hit them in the face, that stops the subsequent attack and that buys you time to be able to finish the lock, the arm lock or throw, whatever you choose to do with it. Number two, okay, number two. Left side, form inward strike block. From here, again, trap the arm. The arm is gonna be right here, you're trapping it at the wrist. Come up, bring it up like this, bend the elbow using your elbow, or bend the arm using your elbow, come around and make a C shape like this. So forward, down, and back like this. And this will be a submission to your opponent. So again, looking at it from the side, block, trap, step out to the side, use your elbow to bend their arm, step over into a walking stance and make a C shape, forward, down, and back, okay? So that's number two. So block, trap, up, bend the arm, <clears throat> and then come around and down. Number three, number three, also on the left side, block. So form inward strike block, grab the arm, okay? Again, the wrist is here, grab the arm, pull in, back elbow strike in a sitting stance, and then from here, you're still holding the wrist with this hand, roll it over with this arm here, turn into a 45 sitting, or a 45 walking stance, and pressure just above the elbow. So this will be another arm lock submission finish. So if you're looking at it from the side, from here, lock, grab the wrist, pull in, strike with a back elbow strike. This is gonna go into the side ribs. Right here, you'll see where your opponent is, but it's gonna be into the side ribs, and then roll it over like this. This hand is going to be on the bottom, grabbing the wrist, and this one is applying pressure at the elbow. So your opponent will be like this. That's number three. 
Number four, also on the left side. Number four, block. Again, trap the wrist. This time, grab, bring it up over top of your head, and here we're gonna press down, and we're gonna stretch like this. So you're twisting the wrist up high, and you're pressing down behind the knee on their leg to bend them down and add pressure to the technique. So again, if you're looking at that, you block, again, forearm inward strike block, grab, bring it up over the top of your head so you're grabbing their wrist, twist the wrist, and basically it looks like a low side kick with the blade edge of the foot and just dig it into the knee and stretch them. That's number four. Number five. This one, opposite hand, opposite foot. So we're gonna step with the left, block with the right. So forearm inward strike block. We're gonna circle the arm around, come around, grab the wrist, and step forward into a walking stance, 45 degrees, and use your knife hand to apply pressure. So what this is gonna do, so here again, block, circle the arm under like this, it's gonna come up, you're gonna have the wrist, and then add pressure right here. You're gonna be doing this to their wrist. Right, so you're gonna have you're gonna have a wrist lock at the end of it. So once again, lock, circle, and knife hand. Looking from the side, lock, circle the arm around, step forward, and use use that knife hand to apply the pressure. Number six. Number six, step forward, outward forearm side block. So again, their arm is here. You block. From here, you're gonna grab the arm. And again, with this one, optionally, you can also do palm hooking block here if you like. But outward forearm side block or palm hooking block. Grab the arm, bring it up over top of your head. Grab behind the knee. There's a pressure point right here behind the knee. Grab your arm, you're gonna have their arm here by the wrist, and then you're gonna throw them up over top of your back. So preferably lower down on the back, not higher up. But just like this, you're gonna make this motion. So from here, kind of leaning forward, you're in a low sitting stance, and then you're gonna bring your body weight this way, and rock this direction here. What you don't want to do is you don't want to go too far that they pull you down and you fall on your back with them. You want to make sure that you stop your motion here and pull them in and they will fall over top of you. So this, this is a throw. So again from here, block, bring the arm up over top of you right, over and behind your shoulder, grab behind the knee, pressure point right there at the knee, and you're gonna lift up on their leg and pull forward and down. And that's gonna throw them over top of you. So again, from the side, walk, grab here, and then over the top. So this way and up and over. I'll show from this side here too. So from here, up and over like this. This is what you do. That's number six. And finally number seven. From here number seven, step forward, outward knife hand, side block, Grab the wrist, 
And again, you could use a palm hooking block if you want to here. Block, grab the wrist, pull the wrist over top, grab their other hand, we're assuming it's down here at their hip, grab that wrist, twist it outward, take this arm, pull it down beside you like this, and then in the finishing position, you're in a sitting stance like this, and you've got control of both of their wrists, bending both of their wrists outward. So, this is a double wrist lock. The only way to tap out of this is to stamp your foot. So once again, block, immediately grab the wrist of the attacking hand. Step forward, grab the other wrist. Bend that wrist outward, pull this one down, and bend it at the same time. So, looking from the side, so from here, block, so knife hand, grab, grab, and pull down like this. This one, it's a peculiar technique, but what you can do is you'll have complete control of this person. They will be behind you now, but you'll have complete control of both of their arms, and you can effectively move around. You could use them almost like a human shield to protect your back. There's nothing they can do to you from this position. They will be in excruciating pain with a double wrist lock, and you can still ward off an opponent or buy yourself some time, but you don't have to worry about what's behind you because you've now got them behind you and they're submitted at that point. There's nothing they can do. So, one last time. Lock, grab, grab the other wrist, and pull down, twist both of those wrists outward like this. So that is the Hapkido green belt self-defense technique, the punching techniques, one to seven.